Have you ever heard of a left-handed keyboard? Probably not. And you're thinking, why is a right-handed person showing me a left-handed keyboard? Well, in this episode, I'm going to show you exactly why, why I bought this particular keyboard, and why I'm so excited that it's finally here. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. Hey, GP learners. So, as many of you probably realize, I love my keyboards. I've really got dug into this, and I've recently shown a couple of other ones that I've been using. So, for example, you've probably seen my recent videos showing the K610T, which is an e one made by Epamaker. It has an amazing deck, so it's a shorter keyboard, as you can see, compared to the most that many of you probably use in practice. And it's got this amazing little rack here, volume knob. It's just a really nice keyboard. But with using it for a longer period of time, one of the things I've realized is that for work in particular, it may not be as effective, but for remote working, love it. And this is actually the one I use at home when I'm remote working. So what would I use at work? Well, more recently, I've changed tact and started using this, the K870T. So this is also made by Epo Maker. You're going to notice a trend here. I really like their keyboards. Um, it's a mechanical keyboard, which means that it's got custom keys in it that are really quiet. So when I press on them, not too bad. Um, and it's also got lovely colors, obviously, from the keys itself. It's got a volume knob right here, and it's a little bit bigger. But more importantly, it has this dedicated F12 button, which was the thing I was missing off the K610T. Um, and I must admit, I've really enjoyed using this over the past few months, um, so much so that this is my go-to deck at work. However, I did want to think about having a slightly bigger keyboard because although I'm, I love that and I really enjoy using it, having all the keys is something that I'm mindful of that for other people who then use my room is something that's important, but also having a little bit more control and thinking about how I can do things a little bit faster as well was something I really wanted to explore. So I then had a look at the variety of things available. And as again, as many of you my YouTube learners know, I love Kickstarter. And I kind of backed one that... I have been anxiously waiting for, and it's finally arrived. So I'm gonna show you the GK96S, standing for Southpaw, yep, left-handed keyboard, and why I want to get this keyboard. Shall we open it? So EGP learners, this is the box that just came for me, and we're gonna have a look at this keyboard. Let's get cracking. So, standard weird openings that you see on most tech products nowadays with this slip down thing, as you can see. A bit trickier than it looks, but hey, there we go. Are you ready, everyone? There we go. So that stuff has already fallen out. As you can see, I haven't opened it. It's still in its plastic packaging. Let's take a look at it, shall we? So for a better look, this is the GK96S. What that means is it's a 96% keyboard. So you can tell it's much smaller than the standard keyboards you'd have at work but it has all the keys that you would typically have. So it's got the number keys, as you can see here, it's got the standard spacebar keys, function keys, etc., and it's got all the F12 keys and stuff at the top, which is really important, something I didn't realize when I had the K610T, how much I'd miss, and that's why I've gone for these alternative ones. The keys themselves are a type of material called PBT, um, which is really good because it's nice, firm texture, and we'll have a look at that in a second. Additionally, in the box, you get a variety of pieces of kit, so you get some... Uh, where well, you get the USB-C cable, you get some extra space bars, I've got some extra coloured ones, so blue if I want to change those colours up, and you also get a key cap puller um, and some extra hot swappable keys. And that's one of the cool things about this, so you can actually change the type of keys that's in this, it's called hot swappable, and as a result of that, if you don't like the style that you've got, you can change it. What do I mean by changing the keys? Well, for mechanical keyboards, you can get generally different types of keys. So you can get linear ones, which don't give you any resistance and no real sound as you depress them. You can get tactile ones, which give you a slight little bump as you press down on them. And you get clicky ones, which as they sound, give you a click sound, kind of like a typewriter when you use them. And different people have different preferences. Mine's for the linear, because I find it has less interference when I'm typing during work, and also it's a much smoother ride. And for this one, I paid a little bit extra to get something called the, the yellow keys. So they're all done by different colors. Um, and yeah, it's just an extra $5 to have the linear ones um, in yellow. Um, and as a result of that, they're a bit smoother, less pressure I have to apply. So I'm hoping that'll be a nice experience. Let's have a little listen, shall we? It 
it has RGB backlighting, so this is colored in the sense that when I type on the keys, it'll give me different color patterns and stuff. Do you want to see the backlighting? Let's take a quick look. Wow, look at those colors coming through. So here I'm just going to show you the different types of colors that you can get when you cycle through the RGB backlighting. You can do this uh, by either pressing the function with either the minus or the plus sign to get different types of lighting patterns. So if, uh, this is the current main one. If I press function and minus, it changes to a solid blue kind of color. If I press it again, it goes to a yellowy green that it pulses through gradually through the colors of the rainbow. Press it again and it's a bit more of a strafing pattern and press it one more time and we're back to normal kind of as you can see there. Alternately, if I press function and plus, um, it goes to a selection where if I press the key, it just lights up behind the key itself in different RGB patterns. If I press it again, it's a bit more of a line kind of method, a bit wider, I think two or three keys looking at that, that's lighting up. Press it again, and we've got more of a pulse kind of wave coming out when I press individual keys coming through. Press one more time, and we've got no lighting at all. And if I press it one more, we should be back to the individual keys as we can see there. The other thing that many of my Mac lovers out there will like is it also comes with the dedicated keycaps for both Mac and for Windows. Um, annoyingly, it comes with the Mac ones pre-installed, so I'm going to have to change these to the Windows ones. <laughs> but actually, it provides all of them for you, so that's not the end of the world, is it? And it's wireless, so I don't have to use a cable for this. It's got a massive battery, 4,000 milliamps, which will basically last a long time. Less if you use the colouring and stuff, you know, the coloured RGB lights. But without them, actually, this could last potentially up to about five, six days or so on one charge, which is awesome. So I'm really stoked to give this a try. But the main reason being, as you saw, that this is a left-handed keyboard. So I'm right-handed, I'll be very clear on this point. But the reason why I wanted to get this is because I do a lot of video editing and using keyboard shortcuts, having access to the numbers and stuff means that I can work a little bit faster. Because my theory, I'm gonna test this out, is that I can type using my left hand on the number pads to do various editing things and macros and that kind of stuff, while still using my right hand for the mouse. Now, I know a lot of people say keyboard shortcuts works generally a lot better if you're doing that, so you don't even need to use the mouse when you're trying to do a lot of that stuff. However, particularly with our clinical systems, actually, the keyboard shortcuts still requires to use the mouse for a lot of clicking to maneuver around things like system one and that kind of thing. So actually, whilst the keyboard shortcuts are a great thing for system one and clinical systems, you still unfortunately need to use the mouse to maneuver a lot. So therefore having both hands available to do so, I don't know, I wanna give it a try and I wanna see if it's gonna save me some time and see if it does. If not, to be honest, I still think the right-handed version of this is an awesome, awesome keyboard. And I'll come back and join us, because I'm gonna give this a proper test out and let you know my thoughts on it in a month or so. So, hope you found this useful, EGP learners. Let me know your comments down below what you think of my various different keyboards. If you want more information on them, definitely let me know in the comments, and I'm more than happy to go into more detailed videos on the other two keyboards I've got here. And as always, EGP learners, we're here to help save you and your patient's time by taking a hand to your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.